What happens if generation after generation, somebody's told they ain't shit? I want you to think about this. Generation after generation, they told they ain't shit. Black people ain't shit. Niggas ain't shit. Niggas ain't shit. Heard it from their mama. Heard it from their daddy. Heard it from their aunts and uncles. Heard it from their grandmother. Niggas ain't shit. Niggas always do this. Them white folks don't do this. Them white folks don't act like this. Them white folks don't do this here. But niggas always do this. Niggas always do this. Niggas always do this. You grew up like that. You hear it all your life. You get children. You telling your children, niggas ain't shit. Niggas ain't shit. The white folks don't do that. Niggas ain't shit. Niggas ain't shit. Say the first time it happened, it was only being pushed by maybe 5% of the black community, right? And it only affected maybe 10% going, going forward. And then the next generation is pushed by that, that 10% and it affects 20%. And then the next generation is being pushed by that 20% and it affects... 40%. Now we're getting the problem. And the next generation is 40%. Now here's the problem. It goes from under half to almost 100 right there. That's where we at right now. This is what happened circa 2000 to the black community. The, the generations of us telling our own that we ain't shit and that white folks are better finally took home. Well, now the overwhelming majority of us believe just that. Whether we get away from the black community, because now that's our main goal to get away from black people. Whether we are successful at getting away from black people or we are stuck in the ghetto. If we're stuck in, see, I just said the ghetto, but I, we understand what I mean by the, the inner city, right? If we're stuck in the so-called hood, you know what I'm saying? Then we treat the hood like we don't care about it. We don't, we, we, we have no, 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 we gives no fucks about nothing going on in there. We ratchet, we trifling, we violent, we always fighting, we always angry, always bitter. We, 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 we do not value the lives of each other because we don't really want to be there. We feel trapped there. And a lot of those kinds of people that's in them kind of situation, they feel like they can't survive in other environments because they can't maneuver. A lot of them feel like they're not educated enough. They don't speak well enough. They don't, they don't understand enough about society at large to function in society at large. So they stay where they feel like they're trapped and they act just like trapped animals. That's how they act in the hood. Whereas the other ones who can get away, they get away, but they still talk like they're part of the black community. You're, the black community is gone, people. Y'all help destroy it. By generations after generations of convincing your own that we ain't shit. Y'all did this. Your grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-great-grandmothers did this. And actually, I think it was worse. Because I think if you start from like 1800, right? 17, 1800, which is when we started really selling out. You know what I'm saying? We was fine. We was fine in like the 1700s, I think. You know what I'm saying? Still. Around the 1800s is when you really started having sellouts. You know what I'm saying? Right after like the Civil War and everything, that's when the, that's when like a lot of the blacks start really, really, you know, you start seeing like these coon type blacks. When they reconstructed America, you start getting these blacks that were more involved in politics. You know, they formed the Republican Party and all this stuff, and it was it was just more involved in the interworkings of America, and it was convincing more and more of us every generation to become a part of the interworkings of America. But the way they was doing that was by convincing us that that being like us was wrong, was bad, and being like whites was better. That that was the that was the whole notion. Now I mean the average black person is so messed up that it's not even realistic, man. You know what I'm saying? Our our mental state in regards to how we view each other and being around each other is just is horrible. And yet we still sit around, we talk this black talk as if we really, really, really care about black people. When the average one of us do, do nothing at all to better black people or to even want to be around black people. Our idea of being better is being more like and more liked by white folks. 
that's our that's our idea of what it means to be a better black person is to be more like and more liked by white folks and that's our goal we chase money because we think money would afford us to be in a higher class when we can get more around white folks that's all a, that's the only reason why we want money that's that's the whole thing man you know y'all want money because y'all think money is going to make you more like whites you know and, and that's y'all goal so everything y'all do is to be more like whites, but y'all sit online and everywhere and talk about black people need to be black people. Y'all don't care about black people, bro. That's why real black movements never never succeed. Although we rarely have a real black movement. 90% of black movements are really just, you know, investing more into this system that we're in. You know what I'm saying? But if there was a real black movement that's trying to get us away from the system, y'all wouldn't support that. Uh-uh. Y'all wouldn't support it. Y'all, cause, cause y'all don't want to support anything that's really for us. What y'all really want is something that's white, right? That, that, that is y'all focal point to get like whites. And I mean, generation after generation, man, we told ourselves that we ain't nothing, and now we believe it. If that's not generational trauma, I don't know what it is. If that's not generational abuse, I don't know what it is. And on top of us telling us that we got to get it from society at large. We got to get it from the news, the media. I always tell a story. <clears throat> we had a community newspaper back home in New Orleans. And there was a situation going on in the project not far from where I grew up at. On the other side of the bridge, there was a project over there. Um, I'm from the lower nine. And right across the bridge was the Desire Project. And they had, they had a couple of... Um, I guess you would call shoot, shootings, right? Revenge shootings, right? So one dude get killed. His boys roll down other dudes, kill one or two of them. They roll back, kill one or two of them. You know what I'm saying? So at this time, we had the paper. I asked one of my girls, I said, go figure out, go in there and start interviewing, asking questions, try to find out what's really going on. Because the news had it as though they was fighting over drug territory. It's always either drugs or gangs. And we don't have gangs in New Orleans. So our local news really can't say gangs. Now, the national news will tell y'all about the gangs in New Orleans. New Orleans don't have gangs. But the national news will tell you gang violence in New Orleans. We don't have gangs. I even seen that NCIS New Orleans one time, right? And I, I watched one episode and never watched another one because the very, I think the very first episode, they was talking about which gangs rule what territory. I'm like, man, they need to stop doing that. They need to stop doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? They just need to stop doing that, man. Ain't no gangs ruling no territories down there, man. It's just, they just need to stop it, bro. And it's insulting, but this is the boxes they put us in, and y'all believe that stuff. Now, it doesn't matter how much Brother Kush tell y'all that New Orleans don't have gangs, the city I grew up in. Y'all would let the international media and, and, and fake TV shows tell y'all they got gangs in New Orleans. And this is the problem that we have, because this is how y'all view us. But anyway, I sent my girl in there to interview, right, to find out what, what, what is these shootings about, right, These between these two groups. And come to find out, it escalated just over a fight, pretty much over a chick. That, I mean, that's what it was about. Some dude, you know, got mad at some other dude, you know what I'm saying, smashed his girl or whatnot, you know what I'm saying, and, and had some, had a little tension. I don't know if he checked the dude directly or he just had some funny energy around the dude and the dude checked him. But whatever happened, it popped off. They got into a scuffle. One dude got popped up behind that, you know what I'm saying? His boys rolled down and popped his boys, the other dude's side up, you know what I'm saying? His, he gets popped up, you know, his boys rolled down, popped them up. They roll back, pop something up, you know, and they've been going back and forth. But all along, the news framed it as though they was, they was at a war over drug territory. And what happened was simply a fight that got out of control. Aww. Fight over a girl that got out of control. And you would never know that, and we wouldn't have known that if we didn't have the newspaper. And the crazy thing is, this is the point I'm making. We wrote the truth in our paper. But do you think black people supported us? Uh-oh. We asked the Muslims to join, the nation is lying. Send us a representative to write from y'all perspective. We went to the Christians. Send us representatives to write from y'all perspective. Went to the Hebrews and the Moors. Send us people to write from y'all perspectives. You know what I'm saying? Because we wanted the paper to represent, to be reflective of the community at whole. The whole community, right? All sides. Think they did it? We had maybe three young brothers that was in college that would contribute articles and one sister. That was it. That was it. 
Every all all the other writing was done by me and my wives. Everything else was done by us. And we did hard work, man, to try to get the truth out to our people about what's going on in our community. And man, we didn't get no support. You know why? Because we didn't want this. We didn't want the community to thrive. We wanted out. We want to be like white folks. That was our goal. Even back then, I didn't realize it back then. You know what I'm saying? But I realize it now. You know, I, I I didn't understand why I got so much opposition behind everything I tried to do for the hood back then, man. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't make sense how people come up with all kinds of excuses not to support me, not to get with me, not to help. And I was funding everything out of my pocket. You know, all they had to do is just put their face on it and help help bring the people in. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't do it. None of them would do it. Sunni Muslims wouldn't work with me. The Nation Islam wouldn't work with me. The Hebrew Israelites wouldn't work with me. The Moors wouldn't work with me. Nobody would work with me. Christians wouldn't work with me. Nobody. And they were the gatekeepers. You got to understand this. When you deal with the black community, the religious sectors are the gatekeepers. You, you, it's going to be hard for you to do anything in the black community without getting these groups in. You know what I'm saying? Very hard. And now today, it has spread it to like eight olds. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Pan-Africanism. Now they are gatekeepers. So now we got even more gatekeepers and you can't, and you can't do much with the people because the people are all in one of those boxes. We are spread out in one of those boxes. Now we spread out among politics. Now you got conservative, conservative blacks. Now you got more liberal blacks. I mean, we are, we're spread out between like seven, eight, nine, between seven and 10 boxes. And none of them will work with each other at all. So how are we gonna do anything? How are we going to do it, man? And they won't work with each other because all of them see themselves as being superior to all other blacks. Simply because of their philosophies. Or their, their, their social political views. Or their social ideologies. They all see themselves as being superior to all other blacks. But they never see themselves as being superior to white folks. So that's something I learned from, from, from that experience. That this is why I got so much opposition. It, it wasn't that. And see, I was neutral. In fact, one dude actually told me this, and my wife is a witness. One of them dudes, an imam at the, at, at the Black Sunni Muslim, right, the mosque, masjid, right? They call itself a masjid. At the Black Sunni masjid, the man told me straight of the imam, he said, nobody's going to work with you, Kush, because you're not with nobody. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you out here by yourself. You're not with nobody. So I'm like, so I need to be a part of some group or organization for me to do stuff for my community that I grew up in. For me to get with other brothers from from this from from this area, for us to work together on building up our own, I need I need to be a part of a group or organization. Because if I was a part of a group or organization, that would just be your excuse to not mess with me. Uh oh. So I couldn't do nothing there either. I couldn't do nothing within my organization. I couldn't do nothing outside of the organization. So I'm not a part of nothing. I'm a freelancer, and that still is not good enough. Now, y'all don't like me because you can't put me in the box. And everybody I went to asked me, oh, you're, you're a Muslim, you're, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. Everybody asked. I'll be like, man, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the kids. <laughs> I'm here to talk about these programs. Oh, they didn't want to hear it, bro. They didn't want to hear it. And it took me years to understand why is that. That is the direct result of generational trauma and abuse by way of, of the whole society saying that we ain't shit and our own people repeating it and echoing it even louder. You think we don't almost commit crime? You think there ain't no Asian people in, in prison? Then there ain't no Asian gangs and all this stuff? Y'all always talk about what we do. Like, we, we the only ones do it. They do it. Everybody doing it. Everybody doing it. But nobody else is highlighted and focused on like we are. Nobody else is suffering the constant and, and continual psychological abuse like we are. And the sad thing is, we get the most of it from our own. Think about that. I'm Brother Kush, AKA the Black Alpha, Salam.